The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. Welcome to worship as we gather near and far as sisters and brothers in Christ, wherever you may be for this worship service. I am Pastor Greg Geyer, and on behalf of the staff ministry team and the family of faith that is St. Philip's Lutheran Church, thank you for being a part of our worship together. I am blessed this day with parts of our ministry team. We have Noreen Swanson and Ellen Disher and John Disher and Nathan Greiner and our elector is Miss Sarah Bennett, the director of Children, Youth and Family Ministry here. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We worship God as we live our lives, remembering our baptisms in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was God. God's Spirit moved across space and time. From, From chaos, chaos was order established. established. From, From darkness came forth light. And from the very stuff of the earth was humanity created. God gave life with the breath of God's Spirit. Today we worship and rejoice in the life that we have been given. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Breath of God, blow into our lives. God of fiery presence, burn away our despair. We bear in our lives the world's disease, prejudice, selfishness, anger, and fear. We are burdened with our incompleteness, broken and shriveled up. We have lost hope. Touch us with your spirit, God. Moisten the dry places with tears of love. Mend the broken places with bonds of hope. Birth us as your new creations, that we might come alive in the Spirit's power. Amen. Sisters and brothers, know that God is rich in mercy and abundant in compassion. Even though we are bound by sin and the failures of the past, God's great love for us breathes us into the life through Christ Jesus, our Savior, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And we join our voices in prayer as we sing, Gracious Spirit, Heed our pleading.
We pray together. Spirit of God, you moved over the waters of creation and have called and empowered your people with the gift of faith throughout the ages. Dwell in us, we pray, that we may witness the abundant life found in the one true God as we live our lives to your glory. To you we offer honor, our thanks, and our praise. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our reading from Scripture. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this, re for this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Word of the Lord. A reading from Acts chapter 10. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. And it's time to get along with some of my young sisters and brothers in Christ. And so I will sit here. Well, my friend Nathan is way over there, and it's good to see you and think about all of you as well. And today I want to talk a little bit about what a guide is, because it might be a job that you didn't know what it does and everything. And I can give you an example of a guide who's a person who helps us get where we need to go, especially if we don't know how to get there. And one example I can use is a couple different times I've gone fishing with my father and brother and we went up way in northern Minnesota, as far north as you can go, and we had to have a guide up at this big lake called Lake of the Woods to go fishing because the guide knew where the fish were. If I went up there by myself, I could go and go fishing, but I really didn't know the lake very well, so we needed somebody who knew where to go to catch the fish. Well, in our Bible lesson that we just heard from Miss Sarah, Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to be our guide. And the Holy Spirit isn't taking us fishing. The Holy Spirit's going to guide us in all things, in, Jesus says, the truth. And the truth is the Holy Spirit guides us so that we come to grow in faith to know that we are loved and we are forgiven and we are all God's children. And the Holy Spirit also guides us when we're looking to make decisions because the Spirit in our hearts helps us to think, okay, what would God want me to do in this situation? And the Spirit will help guide us. And that's the reason that we can call on God in prayer. And the Holy Spirit is there with us to help us in all that we do and to guide us everywhere we go. And I hope you can remember that and celebrate that truth. Would you sing with me? Jesus loves me, this I know. 
For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. God's Holy Spirit is probably the least known and understood person of the Trinity. We know that God the Father created all things. In our creeds, we say that God is almighty, present everywhere. We know about God the Son, Jesus Christ, too. We know that Jesus took our form and became one of us truly human, and yet truly divine. We believe that Jesus suffered, died, and rose again for our sins and for new life. But we're a little fuzzy, though, on the Holy Spirit and the role the Spirit plays in our lives. The Holy Spirit, though, is one of the core beliefs of Christian faith just as it is important to understand the activity of God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son, so it is also important to understand who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does, and how the Holy Spirit moves in our lives. Martin Luther writes in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts and sanctified me and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. When Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure, he comforts them with the assurance that he will not leave them alone or destitute. He will send them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's presence with us. Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will guide them in all truth. After his resurrection, Jesus appears to his disciples and breathes upon them and tells them to receive the Holy Spirit and gives them peace, the peace that passes understanding. The Holy Spirit's presence in the lives of the disciples enabled them to deal with their grief, comforted them in their sorrows, and convinced them that they had not been deserted, but rather they were in God's hands. Realizing that we are in God's hands, and that God is in control of our lives and our world when we face the trials and tribulations of life, that is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Martin Luther's words are at first a direct attack on our egos. He starts by saying what he and we cannot do. I believe that I cannot, by my own understanding or effort, 
believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, ouch. That's not a sentence I like to say. Thankfully, Luther continues with a very important but. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts and sanctified and kept me in true faith. And when it comes to the church, the Holy Spirit also gathers. That is why you are where you are right now as you hear this. You are part of the gathered body of Christ. You have been gathered. We know that we have God's Spirit and that God is with us because we have been given the Holy Spirit at our baptism or when we came to faith in Christ. Time after time, we see the work of the Holy Spirit throughout Scripture. In Acts 10, we heard about how the Holy Spirit, quote, fell upon all who heard the word, including and especially the Gentiles. This is great news for us, since most of us don't have a whole lot of Jewish heritage. The small catechism says that the Holy Spirit called me through the gospel. It could just as easily have said, fell upon me through the word. One way or another, our faith is the work of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit moved and touched the lives of over 3,000 people. The Holy Spirit moved in the lives of the early Christians and spread the kingdom of God to the far corners of the world. Certainly, as I look at St. Philip's Lutheran Church, I see the Holy Spirit at work. Our congregation really is not about slick advertising campaigns or fancy worship services but i have seen the holy spirit i have seen people's lives being touched and changed by the power of the spirit the holy spirit has gathered this body of believers together for the purpose of a bold witness of god's love and god's grace to the people in Hastings and the surrounding communities. Each and every one of us are part of this family of faith because of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That is what it means to be sanctified. We are made holy and set apart for a special purpose. And we are enlightened with his gifts. Every gift we receive in faith from the Holy Spirit empowers us for witness and service to the greater good in our families, in our communities, and in our world. We cannot do this through our own effort. We can only receive it through God's grace. Day by day, the Holy Spirit is changing us into the image of God. We are not perfect people and never will be until we see Christ face to face. We will always struggle with the fact that we are both sinners and saints. Still, the Holy Spirit is moving in our lives, leading us, guiding us, and changing us into the image of God. We are being molded into the image of Christ. Jesus sends his Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, the truth that we are loved. We are forgiven. The Spirit convicts us of sin, convinces us of our Savior, and gives us the ability to confess our sins and receive Christ's forgiveness. That is what we mean when we confess in this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. 
This is most certainly true. And for that, I and we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Our worship continues in prayer as we hear, breathe on me, breath of God. We are made God's people through the gift of the Spirit and faith in Jesus Christ. Living together, even as we are apart, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. To the prompt Spirit of God, please respond, hear our prayer. God Almighty, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant us, we pray, to be grounded and settled in your truth by the coming of your Holy Spirit into our hearts. That which we know not, reveal. That which is wanting in us, fill up. That which we know, confirm. And keep us blameless in your service. Spirit of God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Direct us, Lord God, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and extend to us your continual help 
that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, we commit and commend ourselves to you in whom we live and move and have our being. Give us refuge from the turmoil of worldly distractions. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with all who have been affected or distressed or have lost loved ones through this pandemic. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with those who continue to build, rebuild, following the derecho, the derecho in Iowa, especially in the Cedar Rapids community. We pray for those impacted by the fires in California that have burned over 1.2 million acres, or the flooding in China that has affected over 55 million people and displaced over 2 million. And we pray for those impacted by the storms Marco and Laura in our Gulf Coast. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are grieving, those who are fighting cancer or other chronic or terminal diseases, and those we lift up to you in our hearts. Spirit of God, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Lord Father, Lord, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. And if you are with someone, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with them. And if you are alone, we pray that you may feel Christ's presence with you wherever you are. Peace to you. Peace. Peace. We continue to thank and praise God with our tithes and our offerings. To the many of you who have continued to be faithful in your stewardship, supporting Christ's ministry in and through St. Philip's Lutheran Church, we thank you for that faithfulness and that witness. And for those of you who are supporting God's work through another ministry, we thank you for that dedication as well. Let us pray. We are grateful, God, that your spirit is at work within us, nudging us and stretching us, causing us to grow in understanding and service. May these offerings be an expression of our gratitude for all your gifts, and may our lives be an expression of your love for the world. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in singing, I will believe. Try to watch. 
walk my path straight I sometimes need your hand to hold I will stand strong And I will believe Because you died for my sins And I cried Before you rose again I can hear the church bells ring I can taste forgiveness All because I believe And I will stand strong And I will believe Because you died for my sins And I cried Before you rose again For you now, not perfect but a broken one. I try to walk my path straight. I sometimes need your hand to hold. But I will stand strong and I will believe because you died for my sins and I cried before you rose again. Because you died for my sins and I cried Before you rose again Amen. Be at peace, share the good news Thanks, Thanks be, be to God, God.